not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from the habit? Fume is the innovative, award-winning flavor air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air, and it's very brilliant. And instead of using harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. The magnet part is also my favorite part of it because it's just like you feel because it's like heavy. I never realized I was a, 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 a finger fidgeter until I started playing with my Fume and I really love it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code RIVALRY to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code RIVALRY to save an additional 10% off your order today. Head to tryfume.com slash RIVALRY and use code RIVALRY to save an additional 10% off your order today. Hi, guys. Me and Monet know that this is the season for new looks. There is no merrier way to do it than with Pear's new holiday collection. What do you think, Monet? You know what? You can switch up your look in a snap with the top friends for every event and occasion. Whether you plan on matching your PJs and pairs with your little ones, stuffing stockings, or gifting top frames to yourself, these looks were made for the most wonderful time of the year. And the most highly anticipated collection of the year is here. Let your holiday spirit shine with seasonal styles that slay, no pun intended, you save on traditional glasses, mark up with base frames that start at just $60 and top frames at just $25. Get free standard shipping on all orders and a flexible 30-day po uh, return policy. Make every look merry with Pear Eyewear. Go to PearEyewear.com slash sibling. That's 15% off your first pair. That's P-A-I-R Eyewear.com slash sibling. Hey guys, again, Bob the Drag Queen. I'm going to be in Atlanta at the Atlanta Symphony on December 30th, the eve of New Year's Eve. Please spend your time with me. You can go to seethedragqueen.com to, to hear some hilarious jokes. And maybe I'll wear like a festive Christmas outfit. Mm, and guys, you can catch me in Orlando and Tampa. I'm going to be at the Orlando Improv on December 6th and the Tampa Improv on December 7th. So if you in Florida, come see your girl Monet Exchange because I'm retiring these jokes, y'all. This year, this is the last time you can hear these motherfucking jokes. So come see me do these jokes in Orlando and Tampa. And y'all, Sibling Rivalry Live is coming to San Francisco at the Cash Show Theater on January 5th. Now, I know we have had some... We swear. We swear. This is the final day. We will be in San Francisco on January 5th for Sibling Rivalry Live. So snatch up these last tickets and sell us the fuck out. You know love is a weakness Don't need drugs for some freak shit I'm just high all the time I'm out of my mind I want to say Wait, drugs drugs are dr I don't need drugs for freak wait I don't I don't need drugs for I freak shit I don't need shit. drugs for, for some freak shit I'm just high all the time so she's like she's like high on life, like life's yeah. got high. Yeah, this is scissors. This is Rena, 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 Renaissance. Oh, it's from Renaissance. Which song is it? I'm that girl. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, work. You know, I listen to Renaissance all the way through, and then I just kind of pick the three songs I listen to over and over again. Can we? I mean, I know this advisory. Can we just do our spot of our our wrapped and replay? Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to do so. Um, do you okay, know your who's top, your top artist? artist? My top Make artist. Let of the me year. guess. Knowing you, um, probably one of your little queer friends. Okay, that's not a guess. That's like me saying it's probably some lady for you. That's not. That's, that's not. not I could say I, you. You like you like other people too. You 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 like no, Nicki Minaj. Guess. You like Nicki Minaj. You're guessing. You're you just guessed a genre. I know. I'm I'm not done, bitch. I was processing oh. what my my thing. I was I not you done. Were like some, you were like some queer musician. You like you you. I was not finished. Also, I posted mine already. Where? So you probably cheated and saw it. I, trust me, I don't follow you, so I did not see that. Um, I'm sure you're I will say it's camera time. You che you saw this already? No, I did not. Where? Where did you post it? On Instagram. Bob, you talk about camera time me? all the time. Where you stalking me? Camera time is my number one artist of the year. I knew it. 
My number two artist of the year is Bob the Drag Queen. She's amazing. Wow, you're so she conceded. She got a reason. She my number three artist of the year. year. Do, you, do you want to try to guess some of my other artists? I was going. You took over. I was fully going. Against you what? keep on. You keep on derailing my conversation. I only gave to you do two. your own thing. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Monet. Well, do you want to try to guess my artist? I was in the process of um, uh, camera time. Bob the Drag Queen. Um, Cardi B? Nope. Nicki Minaj? Nope. I don't know. I, uh, I'm good. Camera time. Bob the Drag Queen. This one shocked me. My number three really shocked me. What exchange? Bo Burnham. Uh, Bo Burnham is my number three most listened you to listen artist. You listen to stand-up on Spotify? No, Bo Burnham... Bo Burnham is a comedian, but it's not quite stand up. Bo Burnham is a musical comedian, so I I, was, I, was, I listened to Inside a lot recently. I was just, I've been like re listening to Inside, um, his album from twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one, and honestly, it's really good. Bo Burnham eight. Like if you all haven't watched Inside, you should. Cameron Time is my is my number one artist of the year. I just I just love her. She's amazing. If you, you if you guys don't know her, she was on um. Gay bars. She's the Pink Ranger <laughs> on Gay bars, and my number four is a rapper named Connie Diamond, who I just love. She's not queer. Well, maybe she is, but she doesn't. She's not like queer. Like I don't know if she is queer. I didn't, I didn't know about it. Um, but Connie Diamond is just great. Y- y'all know I love girl rap. Y'all know I love girl and gay rap. That's like uh, GGT is my kind of is, is my is my music. And then my number five. You should have guessed my number five. Ocean Kelly. Oh, Ocean Kelly. Ocean Kelly. Ocean Calandra. So my top song of the year was Fever by Camera Time. My, top, my number two song was Bitch Like Me, Bob the Drag Queen. My number three song was Take My Picture, Bob the Drag Queen. My number you four are was so if- conceited. Yeah. My number four was If I Want To, Connie Diamond. And then my number five was uh, Move, uh, Connie Diamond, featuring Cam the Man. Bob, that's, that's inappropriate. You should not be your second and third most listened to artist. I well, RuPaul did say, if you can't listen to yourself, how the hell are you going to listen to somebody else? Can I get an amen over here? Amen, honey. <laughs> you want to guess my top five? Uh, I'm going to guess SZA. Ah, SZA's number one. I listened to her for 3,565 minutes. I'm going to guess uh, Beyonce. Ah, you are right. You're doing so well. I listened to Beyonce for 2,163 minutes. You're not. You're. you're um, there's no way you're getting the other. The other three. There's literally. If you got the next. The next one. I swear to God, I would Venmo you five hundred dollars right now. I don't need your money. You yes, you do. Blood. And that you little hoodie you've been wearing every episode. You do. Um, I'm gonna say Kylie Minogue. No. Um, I'm gonna say. Uh, yes, her name sounds. We have. We have the same name. Oh, Janelle Monae. No. Well, not no like that. I love Janelle Monae, but damn, shots fired. <laughs> I love Janelle Monae. Kevin Gates. <laughs> Kevin, I said, bitch, bend over, stand up on your toes, arch your bags back, baby, breathe <laughs> through your nose. Hey. You didn't. You really didn't strike me as a Kevin Gates fan. That's really. I'm really shocked that you're a Kevin Gates fan, Monae. <laughs> <laughs> you're so rude. No, it was um, Victoria Monet. Oh, I, I was try- I was trying to remember her name. I was try- I kept I kept trying to remember that name. I was like, who's that one lady? You was like, pops off. Yeah, Victoria Monet, and then number four was Ray, and then number five was Jesse Ware. You know, I, I, I Metro I Boomin. Know. Metro Boomin was close though, because he's my six. I love Metro Boomin. Oddly enough, I said my number one genre was Broadway, which none of my None of those artists were Broadway. Really? Yeah, I said my number one genre was Broadway, which is which I found kind of interesting. I do listen to a lot of Broadway music. I'm surprised that Jacob's uh 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 that song from uh what's the name wasn't Jacob's number one. Oh, so oh. here's the thing. I'm gonna be really fully honest and transparent. Mikey released a song, and I was trying to be supportive, so I had my Spotify looping it so it would rack up streams for him. And that's why his song is my number one. And then now, my number did you do two. That for, did you do that for Bitch Like Me? No, I have never you know, been Jacob's number one. I've, I've never been on wow. Jacob's Spotify rap. Wow. But, but Jacob supports me in, in a Whoa. lot of ways. 
Oh, cold ass bitch. Jacob, 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 I, say, I was I was behind the program where we um got our Patreons to buy the album, so it got to number one on the iTunes rap chart. Oh, so you're saying yeah. Rob wasn't behind that? That was a Jacob massive. So Jacob, I hope I hope when my album comes out, you have the same energy for my shit. But and you know, we've, we've discussed it, and we absolutely can do that for you. No, tell Andy to get his ass down here and do and do some fucking footwork, <laughs> honey. Why you gotta bring Andy and stuff? Why you gotta bring Andy and stuff? Cause you bring him up, boy, but don't ever cut like, like, and that's <laughs> Jacob my is, man, and I'm gonna stand by him too. <laughs> Jacob is a producer of this podcast, and, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna stand by him too. And he's out of his business going to AA, which is a very me spiritual Jacob, experience me and for him. Talk, me and Jacob be always letting you know you don't come for one of us, but I come for the other. Honey. Anyway, my top song was "Boys a Liar" by Ice Spice, which which it had 95 plays. Snooze was that second. Boys lying. Did that really strike me as a as a song you would like? I love Boys a Liar. It was really trendy. Um, my I didn't top, know that you like. I just, didn't, I just don't see you as like a much of a girl rap type. Like I, just, I don't, I don't ever hear you like listening to it or like. What is it? Like, I spice is like, the occasional Nicki verse so from like. Besides the occasional Nicki verse from like the early two thousands, I don't ever hear you do any like girl raps. So that's why I'm shocked. Because Ice Spice is so New York. Like I listen to Ice Spice and I'm like, I know this girl. Like I know the bitch that be at the deli at two o'clock in the morning, acting banjee as fuck. And like twerking with her panties on. Like, I've seen that girl. So I get that from Ice Spice. Then you will love Connie Diamond. If you love New York, if you like it when they are just straight up New York than a motherfucker, may I please introduce you to Connie Diamond? Connie Diamond is just. Mwah, she's I'll take a listen to Connie. I'll and she's, Connie. she's stunning. Her, her aesthetic is beautiful. Her aesthetic is like. Gorge. I love the way she looks. I love the way she sounds. I love the what she puts in her video. She just she's and she's she's great. I big shout out to Connie Diamond. Big shout out to Camera Time. Big shout out to Ocean Kelly. And apparently big shout out to Bo Burnham. I want to shout out Noah Davis. Noah Davis is this um R and B soul. His his music is um I met him when I did. He was a writer um for Halloween for the, some of the songs on Halloween, but it was just on, on the Halloween drag extravaganza that we did two years ago, Ginger and I hosted. And Noah is this amazing R and B, um, queer white singer, and he's everything. His his voice. Wait, is he the one? Is he the one that goes to Bianca's house sometimes? And like, he, I, I feel like I met him at Bianca's house one time, and and I think he was on um, Ocean Kelly's album too. I think he was on uh, My Dolphin Has a Virus. Was he? Yeah, I'm. I'm almost positive. His songs are very sexual. Like he has a song called "I Want to Fuck You for Christmas." No, I, I I think he's on Ocean Kelly. My dolphin has a. I feel like he's on one of Ocean Kelly's song. Noah, Noah, what? Davis. Noah Davis. He's an amazing singer. He's a gr- brilliant writer. I love a good writer. You know, I'm at a lot. I'm, I'm at a lot of you. I don't <laughs> think Noah Davis is on Ocean Kelly's. SZA is just all up and through. I have. I have listened to SZA for over 10,000 minutes. I love that girl. Anyway, um, that's really cool. I, I love that. And that's really, you know, that's really uh, exciting. I, I don't think I've had, by the way, I'm, I'm really not trying to, because you know I'm not, I'm not like one of those, like, I'm in, but I'm, I'm, re- I'm really shocked at how, uh, like, independent artist my taste is. I don't know why it shocked me so much. Um, but I, because I love pop music. Like, I fucking love pop music. Anyone who knows me knows I, I I love pop music, but I don't think I've had a number one who wasn't a GGT rapper in years. Like I don't think I've had a number one artist who was not a GGT rapper in a very long time. You sound I like you was, say some of those people that like I I don't I, I don't watch TV. I don't have a TV. That, that's what you sound like. Eh, listen, to, listen to no, I, just I, love, I just said I love pop music. Like I'm a pop music dictionary. I love love I love love pop music. But I I feel like maybe after some more time around like 2019, my I kind of fell off with the pop girlies, to be honest. Like I haven't listened to much pop since 2019. And then I just started. But you ready, Pop? Because in 2020 it was uh it was Cupcake. 2021, I think it was I might have a cupcake again. And then it was Ocean Kelly. I think it was Hodrick one year. Now it's now it's um camera anyway i mean we gotta get back into my get back into my pop game well now we need to talk we, we need to get back in our advisory gang it's an advisory you spend the whole first 10 minutes talking about music now it's time to give advice bob let's get some advice jacob and do you want yeah. to do the disclaimer 
Um, so listen, you all, any advice that we give you is just for entertainment purposes. Monet and I are not medical ex- medical professionals, sex professionals, relationship professionals, clinical psychiatrists, therapists. I'm not a mother. I'm not a father. I am somebody's cousin. Um, okay, my mom just called. As soon as I said mother, my mother literally just called. That is crazy. Um, so please, please take this advice with a grain of salt. And with that, we should we should do some advice, Ma. Let's do it. Hey, y'all. Um, I'm Brian. I'm 27 years old. I'm from California, but I live in Hong Kong now. Um, actually, just finishing up the latest episode of Advisory. Um, so I want to reach out and ask for advice about heading home for the holidays. Um, so I live in Hong Kong. I've been away from family for years at this point and I have a really good relationship with my parents away from them so I have um, I message them almost daily and I FaceTime with my mom pretty much weekly Um, but the second that I get home and with them in person I start having like physical symptoms of anxiety so I'll even wake up quite nauseous and feel out of it Um, but again I have a pretty good relationship with them so there's obviously some baggage there or just anxiety being home especially around the holidays so do you guys have any advice on how to handle family and maybe for other people just handling um, any relationship with family over the holidays um, and maybe some suggestions of what I should do to mitigate the uh, anxiety, the physical anxiety symptoms. Um, so thank you. Love you guys. Bye. Wait, so I missed it. They're, they're from, they live in Hong Kong, but they're from where? I don't know. Wherever home is. I didn't catch where home was, but. But they live in, in Hong Kong, Kong right now. Yeah, they're in Hong Kong right now. They're going home for the holidays. Are they American? They sound American. Maybe. Or maybe they're just, I don't know. Have an American accent? <laughs> yeah. Probably. I mean, people have American accents who aren't American all the time. I know. Um, Me? Do what? Do uh, what? They're from California. Cali. You know, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't really um have anxiety like that. I mean, I get anxious about things. But my anxiety has rarely, if ever, manifested in the form of a physical symptom with the uh, give or take an, an anxiety attack here and there. Maybe I've had like three anxiety attacks my whole life. That night of uh, Miss Saliva. We don't have to recount them all. I'm just we can just acknowledge that they've happened. We don't have to go. We don't have <laughs> we to start were, naming we them. We were in a meeting earlier, y'all. And then Bob says something about something about ice cream. And then Kennedy was like, are you counting your calories today? And Bob was like, are we done commenting on <laughs> Yeah, I was like, are we, I said, are we going to be count, talking about everyone's caloric intake or just mine? Are we done commenting on my body? Does anyone have any other comments they want to make about my body and my caloric intake? That shit was so And then everyone was like, no, we don't have any. And I was like, well, then I'm glad. Well, no, that's that's like, well to be fair, no one commented said, on I your I said, I said, I said, I said, I said let's make it the last comment we make about my body. Or my caloric intake. Oh, I, I said, I was like, well, to be fair, no one commented about your body. And you're like, well, it's well, indirect. Well. It's indirect. <laughs> it's indirect. If you see a person eating, you're like, damn, do you need to be eating, eating that ice cream? You're not commenting on their body, but you're commenting on the ice cream. So it's, it's well, indirect. Why did you to say what you mean and mean what you say? No, I, I, I didn't stutter. I did, I did not miss anywhere. I said, and I would like to make sure this is our last time that anyone here is going to make any comments about my body or my caloric intake. And everyone said, all right. There we go. I'll make sure to not, said, to, to not comment about your calories. And you will not be coming to my body in any of those meetings either. And I, 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 I don't, I don't want to comment about your body. Your Have I ever come about your body? I don't need to comment. I want to, honey. I got a man. And I'm, I got a man. And I'm I got a man right there. I got a man. Setting the boundaries. I got a man. It seems like you're uncomfortable with me setting boundaries. <laughs> it seems like you have a good bit around your body and your calories. Uh, yeah, I do have a good bit around my body and my calories. What of it? <laughs> Same. We all do. Yeah. So I feel like me setting my boundaries is a healthy thing, and I don't understand what's so what's so funny about it personally. <laughs> Stop switching your head at me and answer the question. Um. I've I've never had any anxiety about something, n- never that feeling like that around being around my family. Oh, but it's, there was it, a camera. It sort of sounds like maybe you are, maybe there's something you're keeping from your family or something your family doesn't know. It, it, do you think that you need to come clean about something? Have you, is there something, is there a skeleton in your closet or is there some unspoken thing that you and your family need to talk about? Also, that's this what is I was a, saying. That's what I was thinking. This yeah. is a blanket statement that I give out a lot, but like also just like 
go to therapy with your family. You can do you can do couples therapy with your family, family therapy with your parents. You know what I mean? Um, couples therapy isn't just for literal romantic couples. It's for any couple of people or a few people. You can get group therapy with your uh, with your family and make sure that uh, and maybe you uh, some sort of a therapist will create a space where you can feel comfortable talking about what's going on and why you feel that way. Yeah, that's what my thought too. I was like, if you have so much anxiety around it, it's probably something that you are you out to your family. Do you feel a, do you feel anxiety about that? That someone's gonna find you out, or you or you want to tell them, and you don't know how to say it. Is that maybe something, or maybe some other deep seated thing that you're so like something has to be making you anxious, or is your family like really strict and you're you're afraid that you won't be able to like live your life? I I mean, I can from someone who would, when I would go back home when I was in college. Like this feeling of, you know, my family, like, I can't, like, go out and hang out like I want to do the things that I want to do because my family would, like, because you feel like you, because you're not, I mean, you are an adult, but you're still coming back home, so maybe you feel like you can't hang out and do the things or, like, smoke weed or whatever you want to do because your family is so strict. So maybe that's what it is. So if, if, if it is something like that, I think that is tough, right? Because... Maybe you're a cigarette smoker and you don't want to smoke around them because you don't want your family to like shame you for smoking cigarettes. Um, so if it's something like that, I would say if you're not ready to have the conversation about ma, like I know you don't like cigarettes. I'm a cigarette smoker and it's it's my thing. If you're not ready to have that conversation, then you got to sneak around and do it. Although I hate I hated that feeling, feeling like I couldn't do stuff when I went back home. Did you ever have that? No, I don't hide stuff from my family. Like I, even if they don't, if they don't approve of it, they just don't approve of it. And I was having a conversation with some of the dancers about that the other day, and I was like, "Yeah, if I do it, I probably do it in front of my parents. I mean, with, with, within moderation, obviously. I'm not like, I mean, I have sex, or I'm gonna have sex in front. Of, I don't do that in front of anyone, but the person I have sex with, really. But like, if I swear, my family's heard me swear. If I am gay, my family see me gay. If I'm in drag, if I do drag, my family knows that I do drag. Like, I don't hide anything, and, and I let the people who don't want to associate with that choose that. But I also uh, come from a very liberal family. My family is very, very liberal. I'm not the only gay person in my family. I, I don't, I don't, I don't have a strong need to hide, even if there are things that my family doesn't approve of, like my, um, ag- ag- the fact that I'm agnostic or damn near atheist. Really, um, I don't hide that from them at all. I just, they have to just understand that that's how I am. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think that's also something that come, for me that came with age. I think the older I got. I got more comfortable with that, but it was definitely uh, I had to get to that level. I, 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 I was, I was, I was not always like that. Now I'm at that place, but also because I'm, but also since after college, I was pretty self-sufficient in making, doing everything for myself. So the more art- aut- autonomy I had over my finances and my and everything, like the more independent I was, sorry, over everything in my life, the more I felt empowered to be like, well, this is what I do and this is who I am. So if you're still dependent on your family, that may be a little hard to 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 to, to make those to set those boundaries and do that. But um, yeah, maybe that's why I do it because I I've ever since I moved out and high when I was eighteen, I've I've not been dependent on my my mother um financially. My mom did give me like three hundred bucks one time when I was in New York City when I first moved there. But besides that, that's the I think that's the only time my mother's ever given me a dollar since I was eighteen years old. She gave me three hundred bucks. It's also really hard right now. A lot of like a lot of millennials and Gen Zs are still at home because of the economy, and it's just hard to like. I I I I I understand it now. It's harder to do that in this world because of just how things are. It is hard to be independent of your family when shit is just so expensive. Is it harder so now than it was like like um in the early? It 2000s? is. Yes, I was watch. I was I was watching a uh um uh, uh, on the view yesterday. On the view yesterday, they were talking about it and how. Like statistically, like way more millennials are at home than like Gen Xers were or Boomers were when they graduated college or left or graduated high school. Like we're just we're just at home way like astronomically more. That's interesting. Yeah. Next question. Wow. Hi, Bob, Monet, and Jacob. My oh. name is Logan. I'm a cisgendered gay man. And I have a question pertaining to daddy issues. Um, this may be geared more towards Bob than anyone, um, but I'll give you guys a little bit of a backstory. So my dad, he came out about 15 years ago after his second marriage, and he has subsequently started using hard drugs and really has started, he's isolated himself. He's been single since. And 
uh, he went from having a six figure income, his own business and kind of threw that away to kind of almost like hit the self-destruct button. My brother purchased him a little trailer in back swamp, Mississippi, and he's been rotting there ever since. And rotting. we recently, I mean, of course we've tried everything we can over the past decade or so to try to get him into rehab and get into this thick skull, but he's super stubborn. And I really haven't had much contact with him over the past five years or so, but I recently learned that he's had at least two people die of overdoses at his house. And of course, this brings up a lot of thought in my head, thinking maybe there's something I can do to prevent his eventual death from drugs. So I know this question is super heavy, but what like um, what can I do to support him from the sidelines while also not having his life consume mine? Um, any advice to be super appreciated i love you guys you know in this retrospect, part, this my brother? i really piled the dark questions together but the they get lighter after this one it's fine i'm not i'm not gonna say that. I, was like, I was like this is my brother jesus christ <laughs> backwoods mississippi um i don't know how much help i can offer them this field because um i had a toxic parent and i just chose to go no contact and that was my route for my own peace and my own healing but I understand that you kind of want to help but not get consumed by your father's darkness. And um, I don't know how you set boundaries around helping a parent in that way. Um, yeah, I need to think about it a little more. Bob, you have any thoughts? Yeah. Um, you know, I hate to tell you this. There's nothing you can do. You can't make someone get sober. You can't make someone go to rehab. You can't make someone want to be better. You can't go. You can't go to. You can't go to program for someone. Uh, there is nothing you can do. It's. It's not really. It's really not up to you. Some people just have a hit rock bottom, and for some people, rock bottom is the grave. For some people, rock bottom is losing their house. For some people, rock bottom is losing their kids. For some people, rock bottom is losing their family. For some people, rock bottom is losing their health. And whenever you think you've hit rock bottom, beware because the floor could come out from under you again, and you can just keep falling. And there's nothing that you can do to convince him to, in my opinion, to make him want to get better because you have to want to get better for yourself. You can't want to get better for people around you. You can't want to get better so that your kids will be proud of you. You can't want to get better so that someone will like you or so that you'll get a job. You know what I mean? You have, you get a job because you got better. You don't get better so you can get a job. Right. You, if that If that makes any sense at all. And you have to put your sobriety before all those other things. And it just sounds like he's just not there. I am not a part of my father's sobriety. And my, my father does not have linear sobriety. It is jagged. It is have, you said linear? Linear, meaning like... A, oh, got it. Got it. I, 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 I don't know it, if, you, if you said something else. Got it. It's on and off. Right. You know? And I, you know, by the grace of God, as I say in the programs... I um I've I've not relapsed since I um joined the program and but I know that I that it's possible I certainly could which is why I'm I have to be diligent about making sure that I'm you know work, being my best self and working on myself and doing steps and whatnot and the, the honestly the, in my experience the best way that people can like want to come to the rooms is either by attraction by like seeing people who are sober and living their lives because of because they're sober or because you're just completely desperate you're you're at, you're at your wit's end and you have nowhere else to go and nowhere else to turn and some people like being desperate some people want to have nothing some people like that feeling it's e when you feel when you have nothing to lose you feel like you feel sometimes some people feel more free because they have nothing to lose because mm -hmm. they have lost everything because they have nothing to live for, you know? Um, and some people like the feeling of having responsibility and having people look up to them and, and, and having people be able to rely on them and, and, and being able to say, um, you know, uh, there was a point in my life where a lot of people, the people that I knew just couldn't rely on me and they knew they couldn't rely on me. They couldn't trust me. They couldn't rely on me. And if they called me, they just assumed I was drunk or on drugs because I probably was. And then, I shed most of those people just by moving around and living life. And which is funny because now most of my friends can't even imagine me being irresponsible or not showing up when I say I'm going to show up. Or if I, I'm one of those folks, people know if, if I say I'm going to be there, you don't, you probably don't have to call. You don't have to call twice. I'm going to end up being at the place at the time that we say we're going to be there 
Whereas back in the day, I just did I just didn't have any kind of there was nothing trustworthy about me. Work. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to offer that question. So I'm sorry to sorry to say that, but it's, it's there's nothing you can it's it's, some, it's work that your father has to do. It's not work that you, that you're gonna do. And again, this this is obviously all for entertainment purposes. Take what I say with a grain of salt. Ready for our next one, Jacob? Or a grain of coke? Yep. Or that. Hi, hi, Bonet, Bob and Monet. I'm a 29 year old gay man in Texas, and I'm trying to figure out how. To, oh, okay, so. My friends already know that when they ride with me in my car, I'm not a trap music. I'm not a trap music girly. Okay. The most you might get from me is, um, Megan the Stallion. You might hear some screwed up click, big mo, bar baby type, that type, you know, music, rap, whatever. Um, but as of lately, my friends have really been like, if they ride with me, because I'm an R&B head, and they'll be like, yeah. you like all this sappy shit. And, you know, I wind up handing over the ox, because I'm like, okay, well, damn, just make just make me feel bad, or whatever. And also, because my playlist is always on shuffle. So, you hear some R&B, then it'll go from R&B to the fucking Lion King soundtrack, to fucking Dream Girl soundtrack, to fucking Luke Combs country. You know, I have a a array of of different artists and and genres I listen to. Um, So how do I politely, you know, say, okay, well, you don't have to ride with me like this is my car without being rude. Um, Sincerely, you can really get your ass out and walk. Honestly, yes. Bitch, if you're in my car... You are subject to what I want to listen to. Now, if you, like, I, I don't mind sharing that. Like, sometimes, sometimes in my car, I normally play music. I'm not, like, that person about it, right? Like, I just put my music on, and I and I also don't play it right along with my music super loud. Like, I kind of have it, like, at speaking voice, so you can still have conversation and music still playing in the background. But for the most part, bitch, if you're in my car, you're listening to my music. Now, if I want to share the aux chord, or if I want to let you put your Bluetooth on because I want to hear something that you want to hear, sure. But... At base level, it is what I want to listen to. And if you don't listen to a bitch, take an Uber. Walk. But it's what I want to listen to in my car. The fuck? Have you ever been out there on the hunt for a new doctor when you ask literally every single one you know for their recommendation? You know, a doctor who actually gets you, listens to you, and makes you feel super comfortable. And finally, after weeks of searching, you find the one. So you can tell their office and they have an appointment available, right? You call them up, find out. But then... The receptionist is like, baby, we don't take your insurance. Wipe away your tears, put away the ice cream, and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, and they treat almost any condition you are searching for. After I tried ZocDoc, I would honestly never go back to booking doctors the old way again. It is fast, it is convenient, and I've loved every single doctor I've found through them. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun. Whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix an achy back, get that mole checked, or anything, Thing. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. Find and review local doctors. Read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. Now, when you walk into the doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com slash rivalry and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your research for a top-rated doctor today. Most are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash rivalry. ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. Go to ZocDoc.com slash rivalry and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash rivalry. ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. Hi, guys. Me and Monet know that this is the season for new looks. There is no merrier way to do it than with Pear's new holiday collection. What do you think, Monet? You know what? You can switch up your look in a snap with the top friends for every event and occasion. Whether you plan on matching your PJs and pairs with your little ones, stuffing stockings, or gifting top frames to yourself, these looks were made for the most wonderful time of the year. And the most highly anticipated collection of the year is here. Let your holiday spirit shine with seasonal styles that slay, no pun intended, this 
this jolly assortment features snowy scenes, classic plaids, yuletide activities, and your favorite festival hues, honey. Wider base frames mean comfort and style for all. Pray has a frame to fit every face with five new wider base frame styles. Their growing lineup of frames has options for the whole family, men, women, and children. It's easier than ever to find your perfect pair also. With the virtual try, you can find the right frame shape for you from the comfort of your own home. You save on traditional glasses, mark up with base frames that start at just $60 and top frames at just $25. Get free standard shipping on all orders and a flexible 30-day po uh, return policy. Make every look merry with Pair Eyewear. Go to PairEyewear.com slash sibling. That's 15% off your first pair. That's P A I R iwear.com slash sibling i will say cold turkey good okay we all love a cold turkey but it's good for are you a caveman cold turkey good are you cookie monster cold turkey good <laughs> Yoda. well people try to do that just to, to break their bad habits but it's not they also try like hypnosis and all these crazy little things but what they need to do is try our sponsor fume because they look at it in a different way because not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from the habit? Fume is the innovative, award-winning flavor air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air, and it's very brilliant. Let's see what Yoda would say. Instead of electronics, Fume natural completely. I can't do this. <laughs> instead, of, instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of using harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. You get it instead of bad. Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while you break up with your bad habits. The magnet part is also my favorite part of it because it's just like you feel because it's like heavy and it, it, it feels like. I don't know. I, I, I never realized I was a, 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 a finger fidgeter until I started playing my fume, and I really love it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code RIVALRY to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code RIVALRY to save an additional 10% off your order today. Head to tryfume.com slash RIVALRY and use code RIVALRY to save an additional 10% off your order today. Are you tired of talking to faceless profiles and torsos and people with no personality? Listen, stop with the headless torsos and blank profiles, please. It's 2023. Everybody got a camera that shoots in HD, 4K, 8K if you're lucky. Say, I need y'all to aim higher and you can do so with Archer. Archer is the new dating app for gay, bisexual, and queer men that is now available nationwide. On Archer, every profile is selfie verified. The app is customizable with different options to view someone's profile, so you can choose your own dating adventure. Plus, it's a social first app that allows users to follow each other, tag, and more. But more importantly, Archer is all about community, safety, and building connections by being your true, authentic self. So whether you're aiming for friends, fun, or to find the one, be an Archer and always hit your mark. Download and try the new Archer dating app today. Be an Archer and always hit your mark. Download and try the new Archer dating app today. So I have a very different approach to this. Um, one, I don't play music in the car. If we're talking, I do not like music in the background. If we're if we're listening to music, we're listening to music. And if we're talking, we're talking. I do not want to hear music in the background while I'm talking. It's hard for me to, fo to focus. I think that if people are in your car, be hospitable. That's like telling someone if they come to your house, if you don't like, if you don't like, the, if you're not comfortable here, fuck off. Or you could be like a good host and you can make your home hospitable. I personally think that when you're in the car with people, I believe in giving everyone a road, everyone in the car who wants to a rotation to pick the song. So you open, you load, open up Apple Music or Spotify or, or Tidal or whatever music sharing, YouTube or whatever, Amazon, whatever music sharing you do. Um, and then you just say, listen, I pick one, Jacob picks one. And then, um, you know, 
Larry can pick one, and then Zach can pick one, and then Monet can pick one, and then Annie can pick one. I think, especially on long trips, if it's like a long trip, I think we should all be listening to music that everyone feels comfortable in. Because if if you if, if people don't feel comfortable being around you, they're, they're not going to want to be around you. If people are just like, well, when I get in the car, he's going to be like, well, then fuck it, you can walk. Then I'm just not going to get in your car anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, if people if people don't want to hang out with you, if, if you don't make people comfortable hanging around with you, they're going to stop wanting to hang around you. You know what I mean? But it's not like they're giving them. It's it's like they're giving him that consideration. They, no, he said everyone knows I don't like trap music. And now, bitch, you want to blast uh, trap music in my in, in the car? Like, no. Then put then put then do Dream Girls after uh, after bo- do Body, and the next song can be Dream Girls, and everyone gets to have fun. Everyone gets to listen to something that that, that they want to listen to. That's that's just again that's just me and how I do the aux cord in my car. If I am with someone who doesn't who doesn't um consider, but like you said though, if I'm in the car with someone who doesn't want to give any consideration to what people can listen to, especially on a long trip, I will just literally never ride with you again because it's it's unenjoyable. If I don't want to listen to um to reggae for for a three for a two hour trip to Palm Springs and you insist on only playing reggae, then I don't want to I don't want to do that. By the way, Monet is not I want to be clear. Monet is not like that. I've gone on several road trips with Monet when she was driving and Monet does let everyone listen to music. You when no, we meet you and, ask anyone my car. And, with me, you and Tara Hyman drove to your college. We were all passing back and forth to Oxford. There's a whole footage of it. we were passing well, Oxford back and well, forth. That, that, listen that to what I want to listen to. That was a different experience, but for the most part, when you are with me, well, you don't you have your own car. Or like when Andy and I go to something or Patty, or whatever, like I normally put the radio on or my, put my put my playlist on and I have it at like a low volume. Because we normally conversate in any way. So we're not really like listening. If moments where we're like the volume is all the way up and we're all listening to music, which is seldom, sure, everyone is like putting stuff, but ninety percent of the time we're in my car, the music is on like let's say it's like like one to thirty. The music is on like a four, just to like a nice little like just a little something in the background. But we're talking the whole time. I'm rarely in my car just to solely listen to music with people. Ever. I guess you've, you've, I guess you've changed in your in your days because we used to listen to music. Well, we were on like car. a long road trip, and I'm sure as Bob as we have all told you, myself, Nick, and Mateo at this point, and Jacob, when we would all hang out at Bob's house, it was typically like watching a YouTube video. So we were probably like in the car. Bob was like, Bob suggested something, we listen to it, and they were screaming rant, and we did something else. Like it was probably something like that. We weren't just like in the car, like let's listen to music for two hours. It was like a thing. Like, we were like it breaking it up. It also made the trip more enjoyable too. It's kind of like when everyone comes, when everyone used to come to my house all the time, and um in New York, we would all take turns picking the YouTube video. So like Monet would pick a video and then, then Monet, I really uh, got to pick. That's not true. So everyone, everyone got to, then Pixie, Pixie would pick a video and then Mateo would pick a video. We all would like rotate. What we're listening fingers. To, so that we weren't all just like, you know, it wasn't just like so whatever pop. Monet said, Pixie doesn't have fingers. Jacob? Do what? You said Pixie doesn't have fingers. Yeah. Monet, Monet no. is doing a thing. That's why, that's why I ignored it. Um, Pixie does have fingers. Um, Not anyway, but I, I, you but, check today? But, I think, but I think that the reason why people in, were always coming over to listen is because they, they, they all got to have an input on what the fun was when they were there. And it wasn't just, it's what I say, or it's the fucking highway. That's also it's different. Not, we're at your house not, to like we're at your house possible. hanging out. Like if we're in a car, like I, we work in an industry. I, I'm working at Mickey's tonight, and and I'm like, oh, I'll pick you up on the way. Like we're not hanging out. I'm getting you guys. We're getting us all to and from work. So just having the music on to get us from point A to point B. Like if we're your house, that's a different thing. We're all like choosing. Hey, we're gonna be at Bob's house tonight at nine o'clock to all hang out and commune together. That's different than I'm going to work. You want to ride? And then oh. We're, we are listening to trap music on volume 30 for the next 12 minutes. No. Well, they didn't, they didn't say what the thing was because sometimes it's like if, if everyone's going to like uh, uh, to the club and everyone wants to get a hype on the way to the club and stuff. But again, I mean, Monet said what she said and and, and, and Monet also has made it very clear that I do not ride in the car with her. I I, I drive myself. I drive myself to uh, anything I meet Monet at. I drive myself there. That is true. Am I, am I making that up? No, I said as Monet said, I oh, don't get in the car with her. Like, it's not like you're being like you're being sarcastic. You're being silly. No, I'm saying may, maybe because I mean, not because of this guy. I didn't know that Monet had such a strict. Uh, no one's allowed to play music in her car. That, no that's fun not in her. my car ever, especially if your name yeah. rhymes with Ob the Lag the, the Rag Ween. I didn't say fun, but I didn't know that you had such a strict policy about who's allowed to play what music in your car. I wasn't aware that that was uh, such it's a strong not a policy. Online. But, like, if you are, like, belly aching about, oh, this music sounds terrible. I'm like, bitch, how you, how you come to my car criticizing me? My, my shit. And then, bitch, walk. 
mean terrible. That's 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 not particularly kind to be like. I hate this music. I also don't know that the that the, the, the questioner was like they think my music's terrible. But I can see how if you want to go to the club and get crunk on the way to the club, you might not want to listen to uh, Circle of Life. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> Why? that's fair. Forty four performed Circle of Life at Westgate. Um, somewhere in 2015, I think it was. Yeah, but as soon as her song was over, they played Lil Cam. <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't continue. They didn't continue the Elton John discography. Lick this pussy just like you should. Uh, right now, lick it good. Suck this pussy just like you. You know, Kaya went to, went on to say she the interview. She was like, "These new rap girls, like when I used to rap, I was rapping about like dignified stuff. These girls just talking about uh <laughs> about their pussy. I was like." Wait, no, was song. it a bit? No, she didn't say no, that. No, she was dead ass. I was like, you it wasn't had a, a bit? Song... No, it was not a bit. I was like, you had a song called My Neck, My Back, Lick My Pussy and My Crack. Kaya? Yes. But she's also a, a mess. Like, you remember that whole thing with her and T.S. Madison? She's like a little I person. remember. Kaya stay fighting somebody. Kaya stay fighting somebody, honey. Who was so like these, these, with, um, these new girls? This also on my pussy and this and that and the other. These new girls, like and we, we we didn't rap about that kind of stuff back in my day. Which which by the way they did. Kim, Lil Kim said, "Watch how I make the sprite can disappear in my mouth." <laughs> Bitch, Adina Howard, I'm gonna be a freak until the day until the dawn. Yeah, there, there was there was a lot of girls back in the day. For, uh, Trina said, "Dumps like a truck." Files like what a nail hole got more booty in the butt. Cisco made that song when it seen me in the thong, the thong, thong, thong. So yeah, they were rapping like that back in the day. Freak rapping is not brand new. It, <laughs> it is it has been going on. I, okay, I, that really hurts my feelings when you do that. Can you not do that? It hurts my feelings when you twerk. So every time you twerk, I'm gonna. <laughs> Do it every time. Okay. What's our next question, Jacob? Oh, wait, Jacob. He said your name, too, so maybe you should weigh in. He did say your name. No, that was the last one. Wow, oh, Bob. That's not nice. This Jacob, one said have... uh, Bonet, Bob, and Monet. Oh, so do you have anything to say about uh, about uh, dads on drugs? <laughs> Woo! Okay, what's the next question, Jacob? <laughs> Not that man should have called my daddy a crackhead. I'm screaming. Whoa, oh, it just occurred to me. Whoa, the music. It just occurred to me that man straight up called my daddy a crackhead. I'm going to, I, I'm for the record, you have also called him that say, on this podcast I, Jacob, before as well. well yeah, I call my, yeah, he's my father. <laughs> he's my father. <laughs> I know, he's he didn't, my father. He didn't, I think you've expressed Hermo with your dad, and he was like, Bob, I think you, you, you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah, my daddy, you, my Bob would know. <laughs> Bob would know if anyone know about a crackhead head that lived in a trailer. And yes, my father has lived in a trailer at one point in his life. And you just said a trailer. Oh my God. You got real a trailer. Tra- you said, a, but you just you said say- a trailer. No, I said trailer. How do you say trailer? Jade, Jade rewind the tape. Not now, before when you just said, and yes, my dad did live in a trailer. Oh, but he was doing a character with a southern accent. No, he, he did it because he even heard that he did it. He didn't recognize he did it. Monet, do you um have you ever had a relative live in a trailer before? No. Have you ever been in a trailer? No. You've never been in a trailer? No. You've been in a mobile home park or anything? No, I'm from New York. We don't have those in New York, though. Like, have you ever Bitch, been? You haven't lived in New York your whole life. Didn't you live in let's say Lucia for like 80, 18 years or some shit? I lived in Lucia from from nine months to nine years old. Yeah, so and nine that years was a mansion. Born, and we don't have trailers. St. Lucia doesn't have trailers. There's got to be a trailer in St. Lucia. There's not a trailer in St. Lucia. We have like, Portimony, they have like, Portimony, they have like, Portimony, people, Portimony, people, they got like, it ain't got deer, it ain't got uh, the moon, the sun, no people fish. People will live there. in like, in like very small houses, probably like the size of like your living room, like before in like, in 945 Amsterdam, and it'll be like, th- drag my living room. Huh? I said drag my living room. Or like the size of your apartment, excluding the kitchen. So like right when you came through that door, when it's like your your living room and your bedroom, like that size, for like a family of like four people. Jake, have you ever been to Trailer Park? Uh, yeah. No, you have. Hey, Where? Hey. Where? I feel like I have. I feel like we oh, have. Oh, that was a like... feeling. So before it was yeah. Okay. Now it's now now it's a feeling. Well, because Jacob can't recount every trailer he's ever been in. But anyway, I've been in I've been in a lot of trailers in, in my day. And I, I, my uh, my aunt used to live in a very nice, very nice double wide trailer in uh, in Forsyth, Georgia. Baby, I remember coming home and being like, "Mom, we should move into a trailer." 
Because at the time, we were living in this apartment complex in, uh, in in Ellenwood, Georgia, which is the suburbs of Atlanta, Clayton County. And I was like, um, I was like, Ma, we need to move into a tr- that double wide. Ma, this thing was crazy. Well, now people are living in tiny homes, which are just like really glamorous trailers. Well, not, not, they're not really glamorous trailers. Sometimes they're smaller than trailers, but they're these tiny homes that they make them look really chic and really, they're fierce. Like, I'm like, why don't people just convert their or try to get a tiny home instead of a trailer? Because trailers are still cheaper than tiny homes. Like a, a double wide tiny trailer, home well. a double wide trailer is like the size of a house. Like a double wide trailer is bigger than my apartment at at uh at Amsterdam. Really, bitch a, du- bitch! a double wide trailer is huge. Double wides can be massive. They're basically I mean, just no shipping an entire reference. house. They're basically shipping it. In- I wish I had. I wish I had pictured my, my aunt Tracy's house when she lived in it. When she lived in the double wide, it was. It was. It was really. I've never nice. seen those things online where they literally pick up a house and move it to another place. That shit is crazy I've to seen, me. I've seen it. In, I've seen it on the road. They on I've the highway. Houses. Yes, I'm talking about that shit is. Crazy. I've seen it with my eyes. I've seen yeah. houses driving down the street. I've seen it one time. I've seen it one time when we when I did the Spoleto Festival and I drove from New Jersey to Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm and. I woke up at this one trip and I'm just looking at a full home on like a, a, a thing driving. I was like, this, this is Wide load. crazy that this is just transporting this whole home. But you, but you hit a speed bump. You better have home insurance because that whole <laughs> motherfucker is going to. Well, how do they ensure they're going to? I guess they obviously map this out to make sure they have clearance everywhere they go to get this home to the final destination. But it just seems so crazy. It, it it is wild, and there's also lots of. Uh, I'm 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 currently on uh, cheap old houses. On my dream is to buy one of these cheap old houses and fix them up over the course of like ten years, and I have it be like a retirement home or a place I can just go vacation and stuff. Um, and a, a lot of those homes are like you can buy the house, but you have to move it. I will give you a house for like five thousand bucks, but you have to move it somewhere else. Like you can't have the land; you can have the house. Gag. Have you seen this new thing that they, all these these smart home builds? But not like electronic, like literally a machine. It, it can build a house in three days and have these weird lines to it. And it's literally like, oh, it's, it's like, oh, like 3D printing. Yeah, 3D printing a house. Have you seen this? No. Bitch, that shit is wild. But your house has this weird texture to it on the inside, too. It's kind of weird. But it builds, it 3D prints your entire house. Let me find this little a uh, three D print of a house. Up. I can't. My my internet won't let me. I have to look at myself. <laughs> well, Jacob's screen is still loading for me. It's fine. I can find it. It's not a big deal. Three D printed house. Sharing it, so I guess it just wasn't going. How to create? A, how concrete homes are built with a three D printer on Insider Art. I mean, I, yeah, I'm that's sure the one. It's the same. Ca- that's it's the same tech. That's the one. Wow, three D printed concrete house in forty eight hours. I wonder how much it costs. They're cheap. Interesting. You know what? Maybe this is the future. Who Girl, it, it is the future. Google says it costs ten thousand to four hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's a that's a that's a bit of a gap. <laughs> Well, I think it depends on the size. I'm gonna need like, I'm gonna need Google to reel it in. Yeah, All right. the, but 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 you but you have to have this weird texture. I'm sure that they'll figure science about to make it not have that weird. You can probably just drywall. You can probably just drywall over the texture. You can probably sand the texture down. But you can probably just put up drywall or sand the texture down, and it'll probably go away. But no one does it. All of them I see have that. I'm like, no one thought about that yet. Maybe it's part of the aesthetic. Maybe it's part mm-hmm. of the vibe. You know. Yeah. Anyway, let's go on to our next one. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to keep my name out so I don't out myself, but I'm a 24-year-old cis female from Jackson, Mississippi, and I want advice on how to navigate the gay dating scene if I don't know if I'm gay or not. Um, I'm attracted to both men and women, and I've known that my whole life, Um, but I've majority been with men, and I've only been with one woman, and I just really didn't like having sex with her. Um, and I know there are a lot of other factors playing into that, but in my head, I'm just like, okay, that means I'm not bisexual. Um, but I still just have this suspicion that, or just this feeling that I am. Um, and I know the only way to really figure it out is to put myself into the like gay dating world and go out with women. But 
I just feel like I'm lying when I go on dating apps and say that I'm bisexual um, because I genuinely don't know if I am. And I feel like it's just rude to go out with people. And if you're not gay, like, I feel like that's like using them as some sort of experiment to determine my sexuality and just feels ingenuine and just rude. So I just wanted to know what y'all thought about that. Like, is that an okay thing to do? Like, is it accepted in the gay community or is that like really like just wrong to do that? Um, thank y'all. I love y'all so much. You know, exploring your in exploring your sexual identity and and your sexuality, I want you to take away this like notion of like what's right and what's wrong, right? I think that we have all growing up, and you sound—I mean, you, I, I don't know what you sound like, but I'm assuming you're like by our demographic listeners, maybe you're like a millennial or Gen Z or whatever you are. I think that we've like been conditioned to think like what's right and what's wrong. If if I if, She's if fully I, if seventy, I, say it again. She's fully seventy. <laughs> she, she could be she could be we have like taught ourselves like what's right and what's wrong but like gender is i mean gender sexuality is constantly you're constantly your tastes your proclivities they're they're always changing and evolving and to lock yourself and think well if i don't like having sex with, with women this one time i guess i'm not a lesbian or like it didn't work these three times so i guess I'm, i don't like girls like there may be there may be other parts of being with a woman that were appealing to maybe maybe the sex not for you but you like the emotional availability and you like the intimacy you had with a woman, but, but maybe but maybe not necessarily the sex. Like I have three friends now that have um that have discovered that they were that they were lesbians. And in each time, it was the emotional availability of being with a woman it was it was the thing that satisfied that part of it. Like that's what made them realize that part of their their identity. So I think that. You should just train your mind to like, maybe this time wasn't right, but don't close yourself off to having those experiences later and discovering um, other parts of being with a woman that do appeal to you. And maybe it may not be the vagina part of it or 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 or, or, or whatever sexual part of it that doesn't please you. There may be other things of being with um, a woman that are calling you and that will be pleasing to you and, 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 and you can see in a long-term way. Also, maybe you might be someone who is polyamorous, like, you have sex with men, but you, um, but you are with a woman in other way. Like I don't know. Like there are other there 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 are infinite number of possibilities that will that could be your future in this. So don't think that you're right or you're wrong or you did the wrong thing or that's just not for you because it didn't feel right this time. Like allow yourself the space and the time to just let it develop. When when it when it's right, it's right, and you'll know. You know what I mean. Yeah, you know, um, there's a guy on um, TikTok named Jacob Hoff. Jacob <laughs> Hoff. You should look him up. Jacob Hoff is a gay guy with a girlfriend. And he's like, I'm not bisexual. I'm a gay guy. I have a girlfriend. And we have sex. And I'm sexually attracted to her. Um, so people, he's like, I'm not attracted to women. I'm attracted to like just this one woman. That's why I say I'm not bisexual. Because I'm not really attracted to women as a whole. It's just this one woman I am sexually attracted to. But other than that, I'm just pretty much exclusively attracted to men but also just because you don't want to have sex with that one woman doesn't mean that you're not a lesbian or not bisexual maybe you just weren't attracted to her maybe she just isn't your type you know what i mean and there is a a, a um a uh section of the sapphic community that is very over they're 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 not interested in these um quote unquote straight girls who are trying to find themselves because they finally get their hearts broken. So I just want to say that is a thing in the world. So your trepidation is not unfounded. It's not unjustified. But I think that if you're thinking about trying to hook up with girls, then baby, you're probably not straight. And your also your queerness or your bisexuality does not have to be 50-50. There's this idea that if you don't want to hook up with men, if you're not as equally attracted to men as you are attracted to women, then you can't be pansexual. You cannot be bisexual. It has to be right down the middle. If you are mostly attracted to men, but you only like a, a certain physical attributes of women um, or vice versa, that doesn't mean you're not bi or doesn't mean you're not pansexual. It just means that um, you're, you're not on this 50-50 scale. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And baby, trying to date in fucking I, I'm, I, no shade to Mississippi, but baby, you're probably going to get a lot of fucking closeted wives 
and y'all trying to turn you out in Mississippi. I have a lot of friends who are like, girl, these closeted fucking Mississippi girls will will get you together and ruin your fucking life because they will not, they're not leaving their husbands. You will be their secret, yada, yada, yada. Um, and for all intents and purposes, they've probably been bitch, betrothed to this fucking dude ever since, you know, their parents were high school football players together and blah, 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 blah. And then it becomes that and they're stuck with these dudes and now they're finding you at the club and they want to just eat, eat a little puss puss and move on. Yeah, I have, I have a couple of sapphic friends who are like, girl, these fuck, don't fuck with you. Do not fuck with these. Do not fuck with these married women. Do not fuck yeah. with these married women. They will fucking ruin your life. They will they will turn your shit upside down. And that's not from experience. I've never fucked a married woman once in my life. Um, yes, you but have. that being said, who? Me. Married woman. Oh, was I the one who fucked you from All Stars? Mm. Um, so, so just so you guys know, I do think that you should probably take your ass over to Birmingham or up to uh, uh, Nashville or uh, over to fucking, um, you know, somewhere in, in uh, Louis, uh, New Orleans or Baton Rouge or somewhere. Because Mississippi did not have a lot in terms of queer. I don't think there's any gay bars in Mississippi. I think the, the last gay bar in Mississippi closed, I think. Does, I don't, I mean, does, does Birmingham have a lot? Yeah, Birmingham is a pretty, is a pretty big town. It has a lot of, it has uh, like one or two gay bars. I, I, I Birmingham has gay bars, yeah. Wow. Birmingham is a, is a, Alabama is, is a small state, but. To to understand the difference between G- Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, they're on a scale of like country, countryer, countryest, and Georgia is country. But when you go to Alabama, you're like Jesus Christ, baby. Georgia is the is is the big city, and then you go to Alabama, and then you go to Mississippi. You're like, what is happening? This is crazy. That's I what Mississippi been to is. Mississippi. I've never, I've never been to the state of Mississippi. I don't think so. Mississippi is wild. Mississippi is a wild, wild place. Also, I can, I have a counter. Uh, my personal one. You will find any way to work the title in of your little EP. You've said it seven times already on this podcast. Yeah. That's why I'm my second. That's why I'm my number two artist of the year. And you're nowhere on your list. March. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put music out in like two years though. And I still have forty uh thirty thousand monthly listeners. You're thirty thousand? I I don't know, I haven't maybe, checked. Let me see. Let me see what my maybe is. maybe it's, maybe it went up. What number if I'm gonna look at what number would you be happy with? Well, I I believe that once you release your album uh in the next like I think eight years, you said it'll be done in about eight years. <laughs> Suck my um, dick, Bob. You'll Suck probably my be I think dick. I'm sure you'll 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 get a big boost in your I have twenty five point four monthly listeners. Bam. So everyone set your calendar for uh June of twenty forty four to get Monet's album. And uh, no, it's actually it's March. It's March twenty twenty four. March March twenty twenty four. Y'all y'all heard of uh unapologetically, get rid of the album inevitably. She is inevitably gonna <laughs> release the album at some point in time. It's coming out. When, Rihanna? When? In the first quarter of the next year, is coming out. Oh, it before the spring. Yes, before spring and in the wait, wait, wait. This winter is coming out. It's gonna be. It's gonna be winter spring. No, no. Well, 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 well now you backtracking. She's backtracking, Your Honor. She's backtracking. Yeah, it was the Honor. first quarter, of the first half. Yeah, you, you went for the first quarter, first half. Like, like the first quarter of this decade. The first, within the first four months of the next year. So April. third. So by April Fool's Day. And if you don't yeah. release by April Fool's Day, we wouldn't be on it. And if, if and if it don't come out by April Fool's Day, we're, we're, the, we're, the, we're the fools. We're the fools if it don't come out by April Fool's Day. <laughs> the joke's on us, honey. We got time for one more. Hi, my name is Kevin. I need help releasing my album. Hi, Bob and Monet. My name's Kelly, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm a 22-year-old cisgender woman. Um, and I have a question no, about what? handling frustrating situations when you live with your partner, especially when they're out of your control. Um, the past two weeks, my partner and I have been having a lot of trouble with our Wi-Fi. And we basically have no internet and it's been really hard to get any help with that. 
Um, and this has kind of caused us to snip at each other a little and just feel really shitty. And it sucks because it's not really an issue between us. It's an outside issue, but we're not always handling it the best way that we can. Um, so how do you handle these disputes when the root cause is something you can't really fix? Love you guys. Thank you. Is it me? So, okay, me and Jacob kind of have this understanding around the house. If something needs to be done, we kind of just know the one that's going to do it. If the router's down, Jacob is on it because I we can't and I won't and I can't and I also won't. But also, if we need to hang a picture, Jacob will stand in the living room and give me so much emotional support <laughs> and so much encouragement. But my sweet baby is not about to take part in the hanging. <laughs> The hanging of the pictures. He will hand me a he will hand me a nail or a screwdriver, um, but it's, it's just not it's not in his uh, spirit. Just like it's not in my spirit to 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 fix the Wi Fi, or it's not in my spirit to figure out why the projector is not working, or to figure out why the weather why the remote isn't connecting to the fucking you know Xbox or whatever. Um, and we, but maybe, maybe you and your partner just have an overlap in your skill set, and you two are both could be doing the same thing. Whereas me and Jacob just kind of naturally fall into a pattern where we we just have different skill sets that happen to complement our home uh, quite nicely. How, how do you, you feel that fact, or do you, Jacob? I think the better example is the ceiling leak because that was something that was kind of both out of both of our wheelhouses that we both had to deal to deal with collaboratively and together. Yeah, that was true. Yeah, when so uh, two times now, tw- on two different occasions, completely different occasions, the ceiling in my bedroom just started leaking, just set fire to the rain, full on bubble pockets of paint, had to cut holes in the ceiling. Now the first time I was home, second time Jacob was a real champion. I was not home, and he did it while I, he. Yeah, I'm very proud of you, Jacob. That was really impressive that you handled that the way you did but we were doing this like i was calling this person jacob was calling that person jacob was emailing this person i was talking to this person when they showed up that kind of thing which probably made it a little bit easier the second time for you jacob do you feel maybe yeah i think by the second time we i already knew the also the first time that happened it was christmas day that is true. So that, it was. that was the other issue the other problem was that it was christmas day also i was recovering from surgery that That's was right. part oh two God, that of was, that as well. I forgot. That was wild. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Christ. We could not Wait, win for what, losing. What is the nature of the question? What is the question What's asking? The I've, I've lost the question. The question is, how do, how, how do you... If there are problems going around the house, how do you split it up between your partner to get things done? And how are you still cordial with each other when those things are irritating? Because, by the way, not having internet at home is fucking annoying. Not having internet at home will put you in your worst behavior. Yeah. How do you like stay nice when it's not necessarily anybody's fault? You're just dealing with a frustrating circumstance together. How do you deal with that for a long time and still be your best self? Um, I think kind of how I do a lot of things myself. Like I just do it myself. And like if I really need Andy's help, I'll be like, hey, X blah, 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 blah. For the most part, I'll like handle myself or I will like call a person to do everything it. in the house. Pretty much like, well, like, give me an example. I can't think of anything that I just haven't handled myself. You come home and the to- and the and the entire bathroom is completely flooded into the living room. Water, shit, and water everywhere. <laughs> Why are you jumping the shit in water? Because you never had your toilet overflow from the, like from like another apartment where water just comes up through the have toilet. You? Yeah, have you? Yeah, I have. I've yes. never experienced that. Oh well, must be nice. Um, must be well, come below if you have. Yeah, Bob was like, Bob was like, okay, you come home. They're pretty common. Bob was like, you come home and you find a burglar who he's he's killed your cat and he's barbecuing a, 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 a filleting a fish on your stove. How how do you handle that? <laughs> okay, a, your toilet overflowing is a, a lot more common than a burglar killing your cat and filleting fish in your house. <laughs> you just came with okay. <laughs> You you come to your home to your house. There's a man holding Colleen hostage. He's on drugs and he he also wants to get more fit. And he says, "I need help getting sober, and I also need a personal trainer." I'll be like, and the to- "How did you get in the- here?" And the toilet's overflowing. 
<laughs> you say you're what? What'd you say? You're what? I said, <laughs> well, how did you get in here? <laughs> that is all our time for today. Just bleep it. Just bleep it. Just bleep it, y'all. So, um, um <laughs> but yeah, like if, if your toilet's overflowing, who's going to take care of it? So we are both, I, we, I would, we, I was bring to action was where we both like get the water up and then call a plumber. Cause I don't think there's anything we can do like without beyond, beyond the obvious getting the plunger and plunging who's, it. Who's calling, the, who's calling the plumber? I would probably call the plumber. And who's talking to the plumber when he gets there? I would probably talk to him when they get here. And who's paying the plumber? Me. God damn, Andy got bitch. I need to move. Andy, Andy ate that up. Damn, Andy you is living so a sweet. life. Andy okay. just sitting in the back like <laughs> Andy will probably help. Andy will probably thank you to Andy, my man. Andy will probably be cleaning it up while actually. Andy nah, probably be too late. You said I'm cleaning it. I'm yes. I'm scooping up the water. I'm calling it. I'm, I'm <laughs> while the, the water is being scooped up. I will probably be calling because, because it, to avoid it getting worse. While that's happening, I'm, I'm, I'm we're, we're probably what's happening. Okay, we walk in together. Boom, we both get towels. We're thinking it up as we get in the towels. I am already on Google Maps. Plumbers, plumbers in my neighborhood. Blah blah blah. Calling on speaker. Hi, we're trying to get this up. Our, our toilet's on the phone. Do you guys have any? Can anyone rush and get here tonight? Boom, boom, boom. They'll come over. And then, but we're both. Let's doing say that you're trying to build a house, and in like somewhere in the midst of all this, your planner lost the blueprints to the house, and you have to go all the way down to town hall to get blueprints for your house otherwise it cannot go forward what is andy doing in this situation that's what what are there two people to do in that situation one person will get them what are we why are two okay people let's to do say that? you have a thanksgiving day dinner and there's no gas you have no gas in the house and you have to figure out how to get gas in your house on thanksgiving because your family's coming what's andy doing I'm going to get Bitch, oh, Andy is Andy is I'm, living the life. I need to I need to get on this Andy shit. I need to get on this Andy shit. God damn. Andy's probably gonna go get a can of propane and I'm calling SoCal Gas because I don't know where the fuck where did you even get propane from? Well, did Andy go get propane? No, that didn't happen. What are you talking about? We got we, we got the gas. We have a whole podcast about yeah, it. Yeah, but we called. got the gas. I told you what happened. I explained what happened. Did you listen to the how the solution was resolved? Yes, no. But did, but did Andy also leap into action? What was Andy's leap toward the action? There was nothing for him to do. I just called SoCal Gas and they came and put the gas on. I'm just, I need to give me this Andy story. Andy, <laughs> Andy, Andy so is, so baby, oh Andy, Andy is living the, the kept you woman. So, <laughs> you are so bitch. Check up in the kept baby. woman. Jacob, don't be taking no notes from Andy, Jacob. You still doing your little chunks, honey. Don't be taking no notes from Andy, Jacob. You what still chunk? doing your little chunks what chunk? house. What chunks? Jacob, like, Jacob maintains our home. Bitch, I don't even be there. How is he maintaining your home? I don't even, I don't even be at, I don't even be at home. Jacob got our curtains installed. Jacob called, Jacob organized the painters to come to the house and, um, and do that whole thing. And he moved did us those. from one place to another because I was out of town. So Andy took care of that home move by himself. Jacob single handedly took all of our I furniture into our home. To California. No, he did not. Kennedy did that. Please. Jacob. No, Patty did it actually. No, Kennedy. Patty was working with no, me. Patty, no, Patty and Kennedy. No, Patty did nine four five to but, to thing. Jacob was there too. Jacob. No, Jacob. What you do? I mean, I, 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 I was there. <laughs> No. So um, Kennedy Kennedy organized the, the the box, and then Kennedy, Free, and I moved the entire apartment out of the like the three of us moved everything out of the apartment into the pod, and then the pod shifted over, and then together, me, you, and Kennedy moved us out yeah. of the pod. And the through here. line there is Kennedy. So what I'm hearing is if Kennedy wasn't a part of this, both y'all no, niggas would be worked, a mess. Kennedy worked very hard, but I'm just saying my baby was picking up boxes, honey. Boxes on boxes, and I'm a very small man. <laughs> you, oh, and by box, j- j- y'all, this was th- this was Jacob with his box. Oh, baby, when I tell you Jacob, would, oh, when I tell you Jacob will have the smallest box. <laughs> when I tell you Kennedy will be like a pack mule, and Jacob will be carrying a ring box and be like, Jacob was like, oh, this shit is heavy. Uh-uh. Wait, 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 what y'all got yeah. here? What time? What time? We were, when me and Jacob were living in a bedroom in WeHo, when I didn't, we didn't have a place yet. 
I said, Jacob, Jacob, I'm going to the store. Can you give me some? I said, Jacob, can you just please bring me back um, a two liter of Diet Coke? And he was like, okay. Jacob came back with a, tw- a 20, 16 ounce. <laughs> I said, Jacob, I wanted a two liter. And Jacob was like, those are heavy. <laughs> I would just like to, for clarity, I, 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 I'm a New Yorker, so I walk everywhere. So I, I, I didn't want to go through the streets of LA, walk in 15 minutes, looking crazy carrying a two liter. It is not a refrigerator. <laughs> Jacob, said, Jacob said, those are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, like, you like, you like, you like, you like, you like, like, what like, you Okay, I think it's time. I think that's our episode for the day. It's been lovely, ladies. Well, let me tell you one more thing. We don't go crazy often, but when we we take our stuff up to the car, I I, I because I was a, a like a boy as a kid, I am like when I'm into right now. When I say when I mean not just a boy, I was like a, a country boy as a kid. Jacob, I was a boy as a kid too. One trip, I will break myself yeah. in half. To not have to go back to that car. Baby, Jacob will take 20 trips with a smile on his face. Jacob will be like, honey, I'm not about to live 18, but Jacob will be at one, one no cheerio way. at a yeah. time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to get all done in one trip for sure. I will kill myself yeah. to make it one trip. Dropping shit, hands hurting, knees shaking, back <laughs> cracking, can't press the button, can't get my keys out. But we got are it in you, one are trip. You, are you about to sing that song? My, my booty, my, my back breaking, my booty tight. My booty <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Jacob, I love you, my Jacob. Back my back my bra too tight, my booty shaking, but the left to the right. But I am. Jacob, I love you. Do, you. do you love me too, Jacob? I love you very much. <laughs> he says begrudgingly. <laughs> Bye. Bye.